And we can do this very intellectually, but we can also do it quite emotionally. And if you allow yourself during this discussion to connect emotionally to the teachings of reincarnation that are on earth, and then allow yourself to feel the emotions that get generated in the people who believe in these beliefs on earth and in the spirit world, you will start seeing how many negative, fearful emotions are created by this belief. Now, like every other belief that's on earth, there's obviously often a combination of truth and error in the belief. So, for instance, many Christian religions have in them a combination of truth, some truths that are very true, and also some error-based beliefs. Many other religions, the Buddhist faith, the Hindu faith, the, all of the other faiths that you could name, in fact, the New Age movement and many of the other types, of, even the scientific movement, all have teachings of truth in them. But they also have false beliefs. And the problem that we all face throughout our progression in, towards God is how to weed out the false from the truth. Can you see that that's going to be an issue, isn't it, in our lives if we want to get to God? The way to weed it out is very simple. Ask yourself, is this loving? That's the only question, actually, that you need to consistently ask yourself about any belief. Now, we could say that some of the, some of the answers to that question are, it's love neutral. In other words, it doesn't seem loving or unloving. I don't really know. What you do with those kind of beliefs is you just put them on the shelf and wait until you get some confirmation either way. Then you'll find that there's a whole other set of beliefs that you can quite easily see where the love is or where there is no love. And in those kind of things you can weed out, even in any single belief that's on earth, quite easily you can weed out where the love exists and where the love isn't. And then you can start making decisions about that. Well, we know God is a God of love, so therefore it's highly likely this loving perspective is probably true, and this other perspective that doesn't seem very loving, there's something wrong with it. Now, with everyone that doesn't seem loving, there is two possible answers with that as well. One is that your perspective is actually skewed. In other words, you think things are loving that aren't loving, and you think things that aren't loving are loving. Right? And that's a possibility too, isn't it? That I could, with all the emotional injuries and baggage that I have, I could have within me this emotion that thinks something's loving when it's not, and vice versa, think, think something is not loving when it is. So, how many of us in the past have said, oh, you know, I don't always tell the truth because it seems harsh? How many of you have felt that in your life? Yeah, quite a lot, right? Now, now, that sounds like a loving sort of statement, doesn't it? Like, not to be harsh. Like, you know, obviously we all have the interpretation that being harsh is unloving. Right? But then to allocate truth to being harsh, that's where we make that mistake, you see. And so now we say truth is harsh, therefore truth must be unloving. You see where we go with it? When in reality, the truth sets people free, so the truth is always loving. And we've forgotten that because of our emotional damage. So the key thing to bear in mind in all of this discussion we have today about reincarnation is to look at the results of the beliefs. To look at what the beliefs bring mankind in terms of just general results. Because beliefs that bring mankind into a state of a lack of love or cause harm to mankind in some way cannot be based around truth. But we're talking about it from God's perspective again not from our own, because our own perspective is often skewed towards not understanding love. Mm -hmm.